Pete Vass here from Aussie RC Playground and welcome to another episode of RC Pit Stop. Today we are working on the Team Magic E63 J Star and uh, we're going to be changing out the body, we're going to be changing out the wheels and tires and we're going to be installing the wheelie bar on this guy as well. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. Okay, so I've already got a little bit of a head start on this. I've taken out the rear body posts because the body that I'm going to be using, I don't need those big long body posts on here. I don't know if I'm going to keep this roof rack or not because it does have the LEDs and everything going through it. I may save this for a later project. But for now, we'll put the body aside um, and you'll see that the body posts are on there about the same height as the front because originally they have these big aluminium extensions on there, obviously for that big body. So we'll pop that aside. And what I want to find out now is I need to install the wheelie bar first because the body that I've chosen is this guy here and that's going to come on there like so. And this is not your typical sort of monster truck body. Um, this one is the Colorado ZR2 and it's, as you can see, it's kind of advertised as a crawler body, but it has the same wheelbase as this and the wheel arches are quite big and it's going to work perfectly. And um, I kind of like the Ford Raptor style of the, you know, the E63 that Team Magic got at the moment, but I didn't want to do a copycat. I wanted to do something a little bit different. And um, I really like the style of this body, you know, and um, yeah, just the way it looks and everything, I think is going to work really well. As you can see, I'm probably going to have to lower my rear body posts, but I need to install the wheelie bar first to see whether or not it's going to interfere with the body in the rear and how much trimming I need to do before I go marking out the holes for my body posts and all that sort of thing. So that's gonna be step number one here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take the body out of the way and uh, yeah, we're gonna go and uh, install that rear wheelie bar. Okay, so to remove the rear bumper, you need to take out these two screws here. You need to take out two screws that are underneath that kind of go upwards towards the, uh, the actual bumper itself. And then there are two screws that hold the supports for the bumper that go through the rear shock tower here. Now this is actually the front bumper. I've already removed my rear bumper as you can see here. And this is what you should be left with. It's just this basic skid plate that comes up from underneath the truck and that is pretty much ready to take on the wheelie bar. So the, uh, the bumper that you need to remove is just basically this part here and the, uh, the little supports, which are these guys here. So there's two of these. So once you take that out of the way, we can then start assembling our wheelie bar. Now the wheelie bar um, it doesn't come with any instructions. So I've kind of been playing around with this to see how it all goes together. You have the wheel itself and you would think that they would give you ball bearings to put in here, but they don't. They give you these bushings and they're kind of weighty. They almost feel like metal. Um, so you put one all the way down the main shaft that's going to support the wheel. And then you can pop the wheel in there like so. Now, this other one that you need to push down, that's a little bit tricky to do. What I found was the best way to do it was to use like, um, I don't know, like a socket wrench thing like this and just push down like that so that the shaft actually goes inside here and that way you can push it all the way in and you're not hurting your fingers. So then you can assemble the other half that just clips in there like so and that's your wheelie bar almost done. They give you one great big long screw. You can't miss it. It's the only one that's this size. You pop that in through this side and then there's a nut that goes on the other side and you can see where that slots in there. So that just goes in there like so get it in there that'll be great there we go and then you just need to tighten that up so I'm just going to dummy fit it here I'm not going to put too much force I'm just going to basically hold it like that and that is pretty much it now the wheelie bar is not going to spin freely uh, I'm going to see if maybe I can get some ball bearings that'll fit in here just so it spins a little bit better um, you know obviously when you tighten this up you probably don't want to over tighten it either just to allow the wheel to actually rotate freely um, but yeah it's just interesting that they didn't give us ball bearings with this one now to install the wheelie bar in this there's a little bit of force and a little bit of a technique involved in getting it done so you'll notice that there's these uh, little bits of plastic kind of sticking out through the bottom here and they come up uh, on a fairly sharp angle and on the actual bumper itself there are a couple of slots just here and obviously that needs to go through those slots in order to fit into place so you slide the wheelie bar into place like so and then you kind of need to sort of bend this up until it catches that slot and you can see how that just slides in I'll do it on the other side as well Hopefully you'll see it a bit better on this one. Let's see, so you kind of bend that up 
and you find the slot and it just pushes in. So you can see it just slides in there like so, and that's it. Okay, so your wheelie bar is now installed. Um, now, you've got a couple of plastic little pieces. One has kind of a flat uh, half, and the other one you can see kind of just looks like that. So this one kind of goes in with this part facing forward and slides up the top here, and this one down the bottom, sorry, this one here with the flat piece, this one goes down the bottom here, and you kind of just put it in to those little bits that we had to put through the slot. And then this one goes up the top here and sits on the actual bumper itself or the skid plate to kind of hold everything in place. This one's a little bit tricky to put in. I've put it in once before, um, but it is a little bit tricky to get in there. You kind of have to fiddle around with it. Uh, there we go, I got it. It's because it needs to slot into the, um, into the cutouts um, that the piece has got. It's kind of hard to explain, but you just need, you need to fiddle around with it to get it to fit into place. Then it's just a matter of reassembling everything. So you've got these screws, which are probably about 12 mil or so long. So these pretty much hold everything together. So one on either side here, one on either side here, one, actually two underneath here. So they hold that that piece into place. And then they, they give you two new ones, just button head screws, and they give you some washers as well. And they go where the old ones were on the shock tower. So they go in from the shock tower end, just in there. And they also give you these, these countersunk screws, which I find kind of odd that they've included these with the wheelie bar because these actually go underneath the skid plate. So you can replace them if you want to. Uh, but the interesting thing is, I also got myself a bumper in case I needed it and like a whole new bumper assembly. And they don't come with any screws at all. So I'm gonna hold on to those other um, countersunk screws because they actually go on here and they actually go on the underside and secure onto the truck itself. And of course, if you uh, missed the part number before for the wheelie bar, that's it there. I will have it in the video description as well uh, in case you want to look that up. So now I can finish installing this and find out whether or not I need to cut my body to, uh, to fit it on here. And uh, yeah, then we can start painting. Okay, so wheelie bar is installed. I had to remove the rear wheels off just so that I could get access to these screws. And I figured whilst I've got them off, I may as well put the new wheels and tires on. Now these aren't, these aren't exactly new. I actually had them on my original E63HX, which was the orange and silver truck. That one only ran up to 4S. And it came with the same wheels and tires that you see here, although the beadlock was orange. And um, I got myself a set of these after getting the BES. I really like these wheels and tires. They work perfect and I figured why not? You know, I got a spare set, I may as well put them on here. So going back to the body, you can see I've got it sitting up fairly uh, level on the actual truck itself. I haven't touched the height of the front body post, so that's still as it was originally. The rear ones, I've kind of mounted them and they're all the way down and they're actually hitting that upper A-arm. So, I'm going to have to cut them down a little bit because I actually want to sink the body down even further. And in order to do that, you might be able to see it's going to hit the wheelie bar here. I'm actually rotate the truck a little bit just so you can see it's going to hit the wheelie bar. So what I might do is right here where there's like a step on the bumper or where you'd normally put like a number plate. I'm going to cut this whole section out uh, right there and along here. And that way it should avoid contact with the wheelie bar at the, at the back. Now on the front, interesting thing is that the body will actually go over the front bumper. You can probably put the body back, but it's going to misalign the wheel arches. You're not gonna be able to sort of line them up. So this is really designed for the body to go over the front bumper. And there's plenty of clearance here. There's plenty of room. The front body posts are going to kind of be right here on this kind of raised uh, bonnet section of the truck. So that's going to uh, have plenty of support there. That's not gonna be a problem, at least I hope it's not. Um, so that's where that's gonna sit. And then of course the back, the back ones will just be on the tray. So now I can go ahead and finish trimming the body, reinstall it again. I'm gonna need to cut those body posts as well. Make sure it's all sitting properly. And then of course we'll mark out the holes, go and wash it, and then we can start masking and then eventually start painting. All right, so you can see I've made some progress here. The body fits on perfectly. I've also cut out the rear of the body here to fit around the wheelie bar, so that works nice. I've also found some ball bearings that fit this wheelie bar too, uh, because I 
couldn't actually tighten this here very much. I had to leave it a little bit loose for the wheel to actually spin. Uh, that's with the, uh, the, you know, the provided bushings. So I was pretty fortunate. I found some uh, bearings and uh, yeah, that works a lot better. So now time comes time for the painting. I've trimmed out all my masking. So um, if I can get, oh God, it's stuck here at the rear. Um, so I've used a little bit of liquid mask on the tray because that's going to be black. Also on the bumpers here at the back, I've used uh, some liquid mask. And then I've just done normal masking tape right throughout uh, because it was pretty, well, relatively easy to do the rest. So here I've just used sections um, and then trimmed it out. So this black line is just so that I can see where I'm cutting on the inside. And then I've done some checkered flags along here. And I'll show you, you know, these, I just found these on, on the internet and I printed them out and you scale it up to fit and away you go. So essentially that's how I've done that. So this is gonna be black. These are all gonna be black as well with the checkers and everything's gonna be black. But the bumpers and around the uh, wheel arches here, I'm gonna mat this out with PS55 and I'll show you how I do that. I'm gonna do a little bit of a progress paint. So I'll show you what it's gonna look like after the first coat, second coat, third coat and so forth. This is gonna be my main color. I've decided to go with this uh, metallic blue or anodized sky blue, which I think is uh, gonna be really nice. I haven't used this paint before. I mean, I've used this style of paint, but not this color. Uh, we have our black. This can's almost empty, so I've got a fresh one here as well. Uh, and then we've got the smoke, which is for my tinted windows. So we'll use that. And then the PS55 is a matte clear, and that goes on the outside. So before we peel the film off, you just cut around where you want to mat it out and then you spray the PS55, that mats it out and then you peel off the rest of the plastic and essentially that's how that works. So let's get to it because it's quite a fair bit of work to do now. All right, so there we go. So that's my first coat done and you can see that it's still very see-through. Now with metallic paints like this, you don't want to go too heavy early on. You want to just create like a mist and yes, I do use a glove to hold the body so I don't spray my hand. Um, <laughs> so yeah, when you paint with these colors, uh, metallic colors, you need to possibly do a little bit more coats than you normally would, but they're thinner coats because if you load up too much metallic paint, it starts to run. And especially when you have really sharp angles here and there and everywhere, you don't want to be spraying in here too much because that's what catches you out. So um, that's why this one's just a bit of a mist. The next one, it's gonna be about the same, uh, maybe a slightly heavier. And then I might start to sort of play around with it a little bit to see how much paint I actually need. One thing I did forget to mention is that you do need to back this color with a silver just to really make it pop. And since I'm going to be applying the black on afterwards, that's also going to black, uh, block the black color from having any sort of negative effect on the, um, on the blue. So let's go on to the next coat. All right, so you can see there coat number two. That's starting to look a little bit better. It's a bit more of a solid color now. This is actually a really gorgeous color too, by the way. So now I start to sort of pick up little spots that are being left behind, maybe little corners here and there that I can uh, you know, touch up a little bit heavier. Now that the paint has fully, fully stuck to the leg sand, I can start laying in a little bit heavier, but still using a lot of caution to make sure that this paint doesn't run. Okay, so this is now coat number three, and you can see that the color is coming through a little bit nicer now. Um, so it's not as see-through as it was. Now it's usually around this time that you start to notice if you're missing any spots regularly. And I actually noticed that, although you know my, my big areas are looking really nice, around here, I've actually got a little bit of a missed spot here right at the front, and there's also another one on this side. So I'm gonna have to apply another coat just to cover up those areas, I'm also gonna you know, I'll check it on the other wheel arches as well, make sure I've got plenty of paint on those and around these little tricky areas around here, which is always a bit harder to get paint into there because you can't apply it head on, it's gotta be kind of on an angle. Um, so after this next coat, I'm gonna decide whether or not I'm ready to put on my silver and kind of seal it all up, or if I'm gonna have to put another coat on again. So let's go do that. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out now. And I think I'm just going to apply a very light coat of silver just to seal off this paint so that when I put the black on, I don't, um, you know, I don't kind of distort the color because I don't want it to come through. So the silver is going to act like a sealant. It's just one coat. I'm probably going to just slightly heavier around where the black is going to be painted on. So around the, the edges here. Uh, but other than that, like in the main body, I'm not even going to worry too much about that. It's just a, a quick mist 
just to seal it off and then I can go ahead and start peeling everything off. Now, with metallic paints, I normally like to leave my bodies for a few hours or even overnight before I start peeling off any masking. Metallic paint does take a little bit of time to set and although this is kind of like safe to touch at the moment and I can apply different coats, um, it's really not ideal to start you know, taking off masking um, at least for a couple of hours. So I'm gonna leave this one overnight once I'm done with the silver and then we can start peeling off the masking and start doing the black. All right, so there we go. My body's done. I've got the silver on there. And as I said, it's only a light mist. So it's just something very light to uh, seal off the paint. Now, before we continue and I start peeling this off and putting the black on, um, and kind of give you the final reveal. I do want to bring something up. On the lid of the paint that I'm using, which is the PS49, this uh, sky blue anodized aluminium, it actually says on the bottom here to uh, paint black over the top. So you're supposed to back this paint with black. The reason why I keep saying, you know, to do it with silver, and I didn't really explain this at the start, but I wanted to make this clear in case somebody out there goes, oh, you know, you should really be using black and so forth. There's a, there's a reason why I did it this way, okay? I've got some samples here, and uh, these, I'll have to hold them, hold them up. They won't actually stand up here. So this one's got two coats of the silver, uh, sorry, the blue. There's no silver behind, but it is backed with black. And you can sort of see how the black is trying to come through the paint. This is one sample that I was kind of fearing, you know, would happen to this paint. So you go, okay, we'll put three coats on. So that's three coats. And you can see, compared to the other one, how the other one's a little bit darker and this one's a little bit lighter. It's still not perfect. It's still, I find this one a little bit darker than my actual paint color. You may not pick it up on camera, but for me, at least in my eyes, it is. And this one's number four. So this one's got four coats before backing it with black. And this is just one good solid color of black. I didn't put like two coats of black or anything. And you can see that this one's actually pretty close. It's actually very, very similar, if not almost identical. Now, the argument here could be, well, <clears throat> why don't you just follow the instructions and do it that way and back it with black? The reason for that is because when you get into these little crevices, these little tricky corners, the paint, the blue paint is not being applied as evenly as it is on the flat surfaces. And I didn't want to have a different tone of shading between you know, the doors here and then go to the back and it looks a little bit different. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense and that explains why I applied the silver before putting my black on because I just wanted to seal the paint off so that the black doesn't come through. Okay, so we're almost at the tail end of this. You can see I've painted the black. I've done my tinted windows as well. Uh, and I'm just about to peel off the plastic here so that I can mat this out. So you can see how nice that comes off. This is only very thin plastic, so you only have to use, ugh, it's stuck to me. You have to use a very sharp knife, very lightly cut where you want to cut. Um, and then this just peels off nice and easy like that. And I'm hoping that I've done this right here because there's a bit of tape. So I'm hoping I've cut through the tape and the plastic. Yes, and now the front bumper should come off. And now we'll do the same on the other side here. Very nice and easy. There we go, look at that. Beautiful. So that's ready to take that uh, PS55. This one at the back comes off very nice and easy. You can see I already did the bumpers and this is cleaning on to me. Now this one here is tricky because there's a lot of curves and a lot of spots. I'm hoping that all of it has been cut properly and we can actually get to see this come off all in one go because that would be pretty awesome. Hopefully I haven't missed anything. Let's see how we go. Still going. Still going good. All right, we're still good. Let's do this side. Yep, that's all being cut. Oh, yes. All in one go. Look at that. Easy. All right, so that's now ready to take PS55. Let's get that done. And the next time you see this guy, we'll be all stick it up and ready to close off the video. And there we are, we're all done. That is the finished product. This is what it all looks like now. And uh, I can tell you that I'm very, very happy with how it all turned out. You can see the matted out front bumper there, wheel arches. I left the sides nice and glossy. And uh, we've got our rear 
bumper here all matted out as well. The back tray, again, all matted out. They do give you a sticker for up the top here, so I had this all finished up nice, and I was almost gonna leave the sticker off, but I don't know, it kind of suits it, it works well. Um, so I left it on there. And then of course the other side, same deal, and it actually looks really good. Underneath, you'll notice that I've got some tape uh, right where the body posts go. I do this uh, similar to what Armour does to their bodies, just to prevent any um, paint from rubbing off where the, uh, the body sits on the body posts. Um, so that's what that looks like there. And then of course, I've also put some tape on the front bumper here because the uh, bumper, as I said, sits behind the body. So when I do have some nose landings, I don't want that bumper to kind of like start scraping away the paint. Put a little bit of tape there just to protect it. I don't think this is gonna be foolproof, but it should prevent uh, scratches. If you're wondering what that is, that is not a coin. That is a magnet. Um, I actually did a little um, RC hot, hot tip video quite a long time ago. Um, where you can put a magnet underneath your body for when you're changing out batteries and things like that. You can put your body pins, you know, in a designated spot that you pick and uh, that way you don't lose your body pins. Cool little idea that I sort of stumbled across and uh, it's something that I like to use on pretty much any bodies that I paint up uh, from new. Um, so there we have it. That is the Colorado ZR2. I'll have the part number and everything like that in the video description in case you want to see uh, or even get one of these yourself. Uh, we've got some new rubber, we've got our wheelie bar, and I also connected it up to my brand new 4PM uh, from Futaba. I'm really, really happy with this radio. This is one of my latest radios, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna be using this one going forward along with my 3PV. So that is the Team Magic J Star with a fresh look, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go out and drive this thing. I'm really dying to drive it again. Um, I've only driven it once really, and I think it's time to uh, take it out on a new track and just see what else it can do, see what else we can break um, and see how it performs with uh, you know some fresh rubber and now a, a better looking body as well, which I think it is anyway. Uh, but that's it from me guys. If you watched it all the way up until here, please uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and uh, of course check out the video description down below. I'll have uh, you know information there regarding the paint colors that I used, uh, the links to previous videos on the car as well as links to my social media pages. If of course you wanna go on there and um, you know follow me on Instagram or Facebook and that'll keep you a couple of steps ahead of what goes on here on YouTube. That is it for me. Thank you again for watching and I'll speak to you all next time. Oh, 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 oh,